I don't know a better way to start than to just start. Um, there's not going to be any particular rhyme or order to things. Uh, thoughts are going to pour out as they do. So here we go. Started when I was age 11. Uh, being that I am now age 29, I was a fully grown 18 year old adult who had been stoned since he was an infant. I initially started as a how what I felt to be socially outcasted I don't know I uh, I was always introverted and I guess this kind of it played into that uh, the I mean the real what I got out of it initially was the ability to discount what other people would say or think um, going to a public school I I mean look at the glasses right I was a little bit overweight back then I didn't have a whole lot of self-confidence so when somebody would take a shot at me and even if it was just in a teasing way I couldn't really stand up for myself I couldn't really handle it I started resorting a little bit to getting back at them with violence um, oh god it was very very bitter sour memories I didn't like who I was back then after I had started at such a young age I felt as though I in my own words I felt as though I matured faster than other people my brain was expanded and exposed to new ideas that I was having when I was tripping balls you know hiding from my parents down in the basement kind of thing and I started to see and I started to understand the world a little bit differently and initially I thought it was the best thing I could have done because what it did was it allowed me to look at the negative things that people say and the negative things that people do and to see it for what it is it's just it's a reflection of them it's a reflection of that person and what they think what they've been brought up to think it's not a reflection of you and who you are if you don't feel like the person that they're describing it's because they're describing what they see what they see is based on what their mind is telling them they see what their mind is telling them they see stems from the way their mind works the way our mind works is a product of how we are raised where we are raised and the sort of things that we put into ourselves so when I was able to step out and no longer allow those thoughts and opinions to affect me I felt completely empowered by it I felt as though I was right above everybody else and I was a little bit smarter and a little bit wiser and you know what they can do whatever they want they can say whatever they want I'm gonna be okay because I got my in I got my thing I know things that they don't know and that's that's all that really matters isn't it <sighs> except I held on to that really hard um, it's it lasted quite a long time before I was able to see the forest for the trees when you alienate yourself and you take a step back you start living inside your own brain yeah you can you can strengthen yourself um, but are you really are you really stronger or have you just built walls and scaffolding around yourself so you feel more sturdy <sighs> what I'm trying to get at is the sort of self-defense that I had created for myself it was something that was in my own mind something that I would tell myself when something that I didn't like or agree with would happen then I could just escape into thought and think you know what it happened because of them it's not my fault it's nothing that I'm doing but that's it, it can be a very dangerous thought process to have if you start to blame others for everything that happens and eventually I mean you're gonna lose touch with what's really going on let's say 
you have an interaction with three separate people. Each one of those interactions goes basically the same. They say something that kind of sets you off a little bit and you think to yourself, okay, this person's not really a nice person. I don't need to hang around that person. But maybe you need to take a step back. If it's three different people, three different conversations in a row, the only thing that's similar about those three interactions is you, well, maybe the problem, I think you know where I'm going with this. When you allow yourself to, uh, when you allow yourself to be free of any sort of responsibility or guilt, while it can feel very nice and it can feel very uplifting, it's, it separates you from society. We are all working together. Whether we see it that way or not, we're all basically headed towards the same goal. We're walking down the same streets. We're stopping by the same points of interest. We're having basically the same conversations, drinking, eating, doing all the same things. We're all basically the same, with the exception, of course, of you know DNA and upbringing and all that kind of thing that defines who we are. But at the end of the day, I mean, 99% of the people that you interact with sorry, 90% of, 99% of the people that I interact with, I think I can see where they're coming from. I can understand their thought process. I can sympathize to some degree with what they've gone through and how they've decided to cope with it. I think if you allow yourself to judge somebody else, decide that they have the issue and it's nothing, it's not a reflection on me, and you're not doing yourself any favors. You're not allowing yourself to grow. I think one of the best quotes I've ever heard is that a, a foolish person doesn't know that they're foolish. And it takes an intelligent person to think to himself or herself, man, I'm stupid. Why did I do that? Because it's true. If you... If you witness somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of wisdom and doesn't have a whole lot of sense when they're acting, they don't question themselves. When things go awry, they usually don't blame themselves. They blame anything and everything but themselves. Whereas if an intelligent person goes through that same situation, they're going to take a pause upon a failure. They think, okay, what went wrong? Why did it go wrong? And why, why is one of the most important, not only the most important questions, but one of the most important concepts to hold with you, I think. Why did I start getting into the lifestyle of being a stoner? Why? The why was because I felt like I needed an escape. I felt like I wasn't able to cope with social interactions as I saw them. And again, initially it, it was great to have that ability to step back and to retreat into myself and to see the flaws of others rather than seeing my own flaws. Where it went wrong is I enjoyed it way, way too much. It got to a point where no matter what anybody said, no matter what anybody did, I didn't care. Even if it truly affected me deep down, I could just go home at the end of the day and smoke the pain away. Or so I thought. Um, since smoking so heavily for so long, or sorry, let me back up a little bit. Um, now my progression was th when I started at such a young age, it, it obviously wasn't a whole lot. I didn't have regular access to it, nor did I have the ability to just do it out in the open wherever I wanted. I had to sneak it or steal it as I did the first time. Uh, the very first time I ever 
got high was when I had stumbled across some in a relative's closet. And I decided upon myself to ask the question of my friend who had actually told me that he himself had already tried it. Um, he came over one day and we went in search of said uh, product in said closet. And we took a little bit and he kind of, she showed me the ropes. We, we snuck out, we went down, found a spot behind a, a public park, a nice secluded area with some trees, rolled up the loosest, crappiest, shakiest joint that you could ever imagine. Um, I was absolutely terrified and paranoid throughout the experience and we probably only got through about a quarter of it before I saw somebody a hundred meters away and I went, oh crap, we gotta ditch this. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm reminiscing a little bit. So that's how it started for me and then it became easier and easier to get away with the sneaking around and the lies that would have to go with that. I mean, if anybody asks the question of what you're doing, you're going to have to lie. You're not going to tell the truth and say, I'm a 12 year old trying to get stoned. So yeah, that was, that was life for a while. And I guess what that turned into was a comfort level with lying and deceiving people. Something that I, feel like I became very, very good at. That became second nature that I could tell a bold face lie with a straight face and nine times out of 10, you're gonna believe me because I'm not gonna blink, I'm not gonna flinch, I'm gonna breathe normally, I'm gonna make it seem as though it's the most natural thing in the world. Because I felt like that's who I was being the person who would escape to himself by smoking weed. That's, that's who I was back then. That's who I needed to be. As I have said, I, I really didn't like who I was physically, socially. I wanted to change and the weed definitely allowed me to change. It allowed me to see myself in a different light, to see the world in a different light to see everything, the things that I enjoyed, the things that I didn't enjoy. I could start to see the things or the reasons why I enjoy, the reasons why I don't enjoy. And I, I learned a whole lot about myself. It was, again, it was very empowering. It, it took me throughout my high school. Um, I mean, I'm sure high school is not easy for anybody. I remember the first time I really felt as though I hated myself was, it was in grade seven actually. Um, God, I'm not gonna. I can't even, I can't even come up with the words it, you know, there's, there, there's a, there's a paralyzation effect that happens with deep depression and thoughts of, well, self harm or suicide, or just thoughts of a lack of self worth, man, it's, 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 it's hard to just kind of formulate any sort of sentence and kind of get it out with any sort of enthusiasm because to do that requires a little bit of effort. It requires, at least for me, the ability to care what I have to say, to think that other people are going to take the time to listen. And when you're down on yourself and you hate yourself and you see yourself as lesser, then you, you start to doubt that anybody else thinks any, anything more or anything different. If you see a piece of shit when you look in the mirror, then that's what everyone else is going to see, right? When you think that you have nothing valuable to say, then you're going to stop talking altogether. <sighs> I 
I am currently dealing with uh, very heavy withdrawal symptoms, so you'll have to bear with me. It's, it's going to be hard to get some of this out. Um, long story short, so high school career, I started doing it more and more as more um, social opportunities came by that, hmm, the best way to put this, when you're stoned, you're not interested in being too outward, or at least I wasn't. I was very content to just do my own thing and let others go out and try new experiences and they could tell me about it and then, hey, if it sounded fun, then I'd go out and try it. And I, I did that a lot. I found comfort and solace in just kind of hanging out at home and playing my games and just doing my thing in my own mind and my own stoned fever. Fever, I think, is an accurate description because I was, I was not of proper mind. What that turned into was that I would say no to new experiences. And then eventually, I would truly be missing out on some of the greatest experiences that I could have had. And that, it started to hit me in a deep, dark place. And that's when I first started to hate myself again. When I started to question, is this good for me? This this decision that I've that I made at age 11 and I carried forward to all throughout high school, let's say to age 18. Has it really been helping me the last seven years? Have I grown? Have I gotten any better at this thing we call life? Or have I just been hiding and lying to myself? Have as has it all have my friends been really living whereas I've just been coasting, just been pretending, just been doing the bare minimum in order to get by? Ugh, and then that that level that level of self hatred it bred something dark. It bred, it bred a new need to escape. But now it wasn't an escape from out there and what they're thinking. Now I needed to escape from me and what I'm thinking. And then that's when you really start to hurt yourself. When you are able to get high, you can kind of switch your mind, if you will, to... You're no longer thinking from behind your eyes and you're no longer seeing the world from in here and thinking about the world from in here. It To me, it felt like I was now looking down upon the world and I was thinking about the world from this elevated place and I was judging it on my little pedestal of stoned euphoria. And that, oh man. To this day, I've never had a successful relationship. I think that all started in high school. I mean, that's when I really started trying dating for the first time and trying to, I don't know, adapt myself to somebody else, to accept somebody else. I, to this day, still don't really fully understand how to have a proper monogamous relationship. So I've never really had one. I've, I've had two to three months of what I consider to be success, which has always led to <laughs> heartbreak on one of the sides. I've broken hearts and I've had my heart broken as well, more times than I want to think about. And I think it was all just, continues to be, stemmed from a stunted view or stunted understanding of relationships. That stunted understanding was something that I gave myself that I I thought was insight, I thought was wisdom. But it was just an unguided thought that I used to protect myself. But no, man, there's, there's nothing wrong with me. There can't be anything wrong with me. It's just, you know, that person's not right for me. You know, they did this thing and that's not going to jive with the way I do my thing. And... You know, there's there's going to be somebody out there that's perfect and you won't have to compromise. You're not going to have to do anything different. Oh, man. If I could go by, by, back and just kick the shit out of myself a couple of times, God damn would I do it. I really, really wish I had never found that jar of weed in the closet. I really, really wish I had never tried it 
I had never started. I had never decided that it was right for me. I really wish that I could go back and experience life through sober eyes. Man. This, uh, it doesn't quite end there, of course. I'm, I'm a little bit older than that. The story doesn't end at 18. Uh, so why don't we go after high school when I started to get a little bit of freedom? There was no more school. There was no more necessity to go in every day and, you know, grind out something you don't want to do. Uh, for as long as I possibly could, I just kind of hid, hid in the computer, hid in my PlayStation. I thought I was happy. I thought I was enjoying life, but I mean, how can you really be happy and how can you really be enjoying life when you're not sober? You're not there. You're not truly experiencing emotion as emotion is. You're not feeling it how it feels. You're feeling it through a stunted, blurry, fuzzy pothead, let's call it. The pothead. It changes the way you think. It changes the way that food tastes. It changes the way that sensation is. The sensation of touch. The sensation of... Man, I think I think she might be into me, man. And and those those butter those those fluttering butterflies, weed stunts all of that shit. In the beginning, I thought that food was tasting better and music sounded better and touch felt better and everything was better. But it 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 was certainly different. It was something that I was experiencing for the first time in a new way. But man, it it was not. It was not better. It was just how it is when you're stoned. So I was, I was hiding. I was hiding in myself. I was hiding in my games. I was hiding in my way of doing life. And the more I hid, the easier it became. No, that's backwards. The more I hid, the harder it became to come out of my shell. The harder it became to say, yes, I want to go out with you. I want to go and try that thing and let's, let's go. Let's go do this. I was so heavily in love with the weed and I was so convinced that I was doing something good and that I was allowing myself to mature and blossom. I was so convinced. I was so full of shit. Oh God, all those, all those years, all those nights, all those things that I could have done, all those girls that I could have banged. I didn't do any of that shit, man. I played fucking games. I sat in my chair and I sang sad songs. Or if I wasn't stoned enough or too stoned, then I would sit in my chair and I would cry because I was a little bitch and I was unhappy with the decisions that I had made, but I wasn't really willing to do anything about it. Isn't that a fun feeling? Man, I don't know why it took me so long. There were so many points in my life where I stopped, where I had quit, where I had put it down, where I had chucked my bong in the garbage, where I had gotten rid of all of my supplies. And every time it felt good for like a week, for like a week. And then the week got me. I got weak. I started to crave the escape. When you decide to give up on something that just gives you that instant euphoria, that instant gratification that you can just make yourself feel almost like you're in ecstasy whenever you want. All you have to do is spark up a joint and then you're good and you're good to go. It's hard to, it's hard to discard that when you have disallowed yourself from real human interaction, from anything really positive in your life. When you I felt as though I had nobody that I could really reach out to and say, hey man, I'm going through some shit. Can we hang out? Can we go do this? 
I, I truly felt as though nobody cared because I had spent too much time alone and I had too often said, nah, man, I'm not really interested. Thanks for the offer, but I'm just, I'm just going to do my own thing. You know, I, for the life of me, couldn't imagine anybody caring what I was going through. So I convinced myself that I would just go through it alone and that I would be fine in doing so. And holy shit, was that a mistake? Man, that just led to so much more smoking. So much more isolation. So much more <laughs> self-loathing. So much more crying. And eventually it led to some very, very real, constant, consistent, heavy, painful feelings, wishes, thoughts, suicidal. Uh, man, I fucked up, man. I, I've spent so long fucking up. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to undo it. Maybe it'd be easier to just, you know, end it, you know? either life ends, I go into the dirt and disappear, or maybe I go back up into some sort of afterlife and I can, you know, throw a new quarter in the slot and try again. Who the fuck knows? Oh God. I mean, I'm, I'm glad I have the family that I have. That's the only reason that I'm still here. The only reason I haven't jumped in front of traffic or jumped off a building is because I feel as though I owe everything Every little bit of happiness that I've ever had, I owe it to the family that has supported me and the family that gave it to me. And if I was to take my own life, then it would be stealing from them. And as shitty as I felt about myself, I wasn't going to feel shittier by stealing from the only people that actually cared. Thank God for that. Thank God I'm still here. Thank God I still have time to pay them back. But it was, for years, it was, it was crippling and it was repetitive and I couldn't see any way out. Um, I would go through a cycle, let's say of deep, dark depression, which led me to smoking a little bit less and maybe I'd exercise a little bit more. Maybe I'd eat a little bit healthier. Maybe I'd start making decisions to improve my mood and my physicality and that it would help to a certain degree. And then I would stop feeling those dark, dark thoughts. And I would allow to see happiness again and see the sunshine. And then when I was happy again, I didn't feel as though I needed to put down the bong. I would allow myself to enjoy the things that bring me joy. I would allow myself to overindulge and to smoke every fucking day, multiple times, man. Man. I've bounced around from career path to career path. Thoughts of things that I might want to do, that I might be good at. And in all honesty, I've been good at all of them. I could do anything, could have done anything if I had just stuck with it. Ah, <sighs> man, the... The biggest, the biggest problem with smoking weed, and I think the best quote I've ever heard on it, it actually came from um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. For those who don't know, they're the creators, writers of South Park. Um, it was, it was in one of their earlier seasons. For, uh, it, a character um, Stan um, was being talked to by his father Randy. And the, the whole episode was about uh, keeping away from pot. Uh, the premise of the episode was there was this company that would, uh, that would create this uh, older self for the children, the children in South Park. Uh, so let's say, for instance, Stan would be able to meet his 30-year-old self, who's this degenerate, gross, hairy drug addict. And this character would introduce himself as, Hey man, I'm Stan. I came from the future. I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't do drugs. It, it was it was it was a fucking hilarious episode. I'll leave a link down in the description because it oh fuck I love that. I love I love South Park, man. If you're one of the people who thinks that it's just immature potty humor and whatnot, man. I mean, to each his own, but 
<laughs> it's not. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, so eventually, um, obviously, the boys figured out the whole premise, and they confronted their parents about it. And the best quote I've ever heard about smoking weed came from uh, the moment of honesty and lucidity, when Randy finally admitted to his son what was going on. I'll be paraphrasing. I haven't seen it in a long, long time. But it went something along the lines of, Okay, Stan, well, you know what? It's probably not going to kill you, and it's probably not going to cause you to go out and do all sorts of crime, criminal activities, and it's not going to, probably not going to cause you to do all sorts of dangerous drugs afterwards. But what weed will do to you is it, it will make you okay with being bored. And it's when you're bored that you go out and you do the things that make you unique and that make you successful. It's when you're bored that you explore a new instrument. You start picking up a new skill. You start practicing a new language. You start developing a new relationship. It's when you're bored that you really start to develop and blossom. And when you're stoned, you're okay with just sitting there. You don't feel bored. It's, it's, it's okay. You're, oh, you know, <laughs> and that man, that it stuck with me all of these years, even when I wasn't fully capable of giving up the habit, I would, I would come back to that thought and it would, it would ground me a little bit. And it, I think it stopped me from going over the deep end a few times. But uh, the problem that I was having was I never, I never decided or I never saw the real issue with getting high. Reasons that I would stop or take a break in the past was that it was affecting me physically, it was affecting me mentally, it was affecting me socially. And you know what? I just, I, I don't need that. It's, I've had too much and I need to take a break or I need to cut it out and I need to improve this part of my life and I can't improve upon it if I'm doing this. So I'm going to stop this. It was always temporary. It never stuck. And the reason for that was somewhere deep down, I never told myself or I never decided that I don't like it, that it's not good for me. All that I really did or say was that I don't like it right now. It's not good for me right now. But all that leads to is eventually it's going to be good for you again, isn't it? You just, you talked yourself right into that little trap. And however long you take a break for, to me, it didn't matter. It didn't feel as though I had gotten anywhere. When you're a stoner and you feel like a loser at age 18... And you take a break for a couple of years, then you start again. Well, you're a stoner and you're a loser at age 20. Nothing has changed. You haven't gained anything. All that you've done was potentially wasted the last two years of your life. And that's how I felt. But I still, I still didn't see it as something that didn't offer benefit. I still saw a good side to this smoking. I still saw a positive aspect in being okay with being alone and bored. <sighs> so I kept doing it. And as you keep doing anything, you gain resistances to it. And you're going to have to keep doing more of it in order to get yourself to that same state. That same level of escape. That same level of euphoria, I guess. Oh, man. And the more that you do it, the more that you start to deteriorate. Sorry, I keep saying you. This is my story. I don't know what other people go through. I hope that other people don't experience the depths of pain that I have experienced. But at the same time, I can only imagine that they have. I now believe that we're we're all basically the same. So when I see somebody being a dick or struggling, my first and only thought is, man, they've probably seen some shit. 
I know that when I'm at my lowest, I don't look good, and I don't act good, and I don't sound good, and I'm a fucking asshole. But that doesn't mean that I haven't gone through some shit, and that I'm not trying to be better, and that, I, that I'm not trying to be a good person. So I won't ever judge somebody based on the way that they're acting in the moment. Because that's not, that's not a depiction of who we are. That's a depiction maybe of what's going on right now. <sighs> I've completely lost track. <laughs> Man. So, I guess to progress with the, uh, what, to progress with the storyline here, um, I, I, I would fade in and out of it. I would stop and then I would start again. And then every time I started again, I would have to start eventually getting more and more of it. I would have to smoke more to reach that same level. I would have to buy more in order to smoke more. I would have to work more in order to be able to afford more in order to be able to buy more. And there was a point in my life where I was looking at, I was looking at my monthly expenditure and man, like I was spending easily three, four, sometimes $500 per month on weed. And it would not even phase me. That was just the normal amount to get me through a, my daily routine. God, that's a lot of fucking money, man. That's a lot of money. When you're spending, what is that? Like $3,600 per year scaled up to around five scale 36 up to five grit sorry 36 up to six thousand six thousand dollars per year just to feel okay just to feel as though you're not a piece of shit like you're not wasting your time in your life and the big kicker was that it would make me feel that way at the end of the day that uh the more you smoke the more often you smoke the less time you are able to stay up there, uh, you'll come down quicker and quicker. And then every time you come down, you're going to come down a little bit harder and you're going to land a little bit lower and it's going to hurt a little bit deeper. And every time it hurts deeper and you don't know how else to escape that hurt, what do you do? You smoke more. You find a new escape. You need to escape from that new level of dark pain. And every time you escape from that new dark level, you dive, you dig yourself even deeper because escaping from the darkness isn't helpful. That's, that's not the goal. You need to overcome. You need to understand to a certain extent. You need to forgive. You need to conquer the darkness. If you escape the darkness, if you, if you say rather than, God, I'm jumping all over the place. Rather than, uh, rather than just cutting back, I'm going to cut this substance, this bad thing out of my life entirely. <laughs> well, whether you're doing it daily or you're avoiding it daily, it's still affecting you daily, isn't it? So I personally don't think that just, you know, swearing off and forcing yourself off of something is the way to do it. I don't think that has any benefit if you have to actively avoid something that realistically does bring you a little bit of joy here and there. If you're forcing yourself to deny yourself of that day after day, then it's still impacting your life just as much as if you were constantly doing it again. Oh, well, I, I, it took me a long, long time, I guess, until now, until age 29 to finally figure out that I was not able to stop because I didn't really understand that I didn't want to stop. In order to stop, you have to, you have to not want not just not want the after effects but you have to not want the immediate effects you have to not want the taste you have to not want the smell because for me now the taste and the smell is just 
reminiscent. It just it reminds me of the fact that I feel like I've completely wasted my twenties. That although I made some money and I, you know, I have a nice car and I've got a bunch of guitars and a bunch of stuff that bring me joy. I don't have a family. I don't have anything that I think is going to provide long-term benefit. All I have now is uh, a, a hindsight full of regrets. Just a prior lifetime of things that I could have done better. That's, I mean, that's, that's not a pleasant place to be. I know that right now I am still struggling with depression and I still have the, uh, I mean, I've only, I've only cut the weed out 48 hours ago, so it's going to be affecting me for at least the next two months and it's going to be affecting my mood no matter what I do. I feel very good about the fact that I'm not going to miss it. I've finally reached a point where I hate what it did to me. I hate what it made me do to myself. I hate the way it makes me feel about myself. I hate the way it makes me look at myself. I hate the way it makes me talk about myself. I hate everything about it now. I hate how disgusting it is in the back of your throat. I hate how you wake up feeling fuzzy the next day. I hate how you can't formulate sentences properly if you do it too much or too often. I hate, I just, I hate it. I hate, but I don't want to be full of hate anymore, man. That's, that's why I'm stopping. And to a large extent, that is really, really why I'm doing this channel as it's, it's allowing me to focus on positive things in my life. Like whether it's, whether it's the Neem Gaming channel, Neeb's Gaming channel, check them out. Whether it's uh, the Outer Mitter Shell, check them out. Whether it's, uh, whether it's Whack Gaming, check them out. I mean, these, these wonderful, wonderful human beings, they put their soul and their time into creating this content that is just purely meant to bring us joy. Us, the viewers, whether we are Patreon, whether we are directly supporting them financially or not. They're just putting out content that people are going to enjoy. And when they see something that somebody or lots of people enjoy more than other things, then they start to focus on that. They start to get better at that and bring us more of that. I mean, what, what more can you say about the quality of human being that is focused on the enjoyment of others? That's, that's, that's the best version of myself that I could possibly imagine. So that's, that's all I want to do at this point. And that's all, that's all I'm focused on. But, um, to get there, I have to start, I have to start liking myself. I think if I'm putting out a whole bunch of videos, just talking about self degradation and how much I hate myself, nobody's going to pay attention. Nobody's going to want to watch that. So if you've stuck through this far, thank you very much. I do really appreciate it. And I promise you that things are getting better and I'm going to start throwing in some happy videos and man, <sighs> just to come back to it, it's what, what weed has done to me is it's made me hate myself. It's made me hate my decisions and it's made me want to kill myself even though I would never do it and I'm never going to succumb to what I consider to be weakness. It's made me truly give up. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done giving up. I'm done hiding. I'm done escaping. I'm done running. I'm done. I'm done with all of that nonsense. I am going to use the strength and the time that I have left and I am going to create a life that I can be proud of. It starts here. I don't know where this is going to lead. I don't know if YouTube is going to offer any sort of a career path for me, but I know that right now it is the best thing for me and thanks for sticking with me.